Uh, Jackson Carlaw uh, confirmed, uh, as we have, that the funding for the bridge will appear as a level three item in the budget, so therefore will be something that any change in will be approved by Parliament. That's a first, uh, and I think one that will be uh, broadly welcomed because it will enable uh, Parliament to engage uh, with the ongoing expenditure on the bridge in a way uh, which perhaps previous projects uh, we were less able to do. Um, Charlie Gordon, in his uh, opening remarks, uh, made the comment that repair was an option with too many downsides, and I think there is little doubt about that. We heard from a number of members about the economic uh, cost uh, of closing the bridge. If we were to uh, repair uh, the existing bridge, essentially it is about building up the columns, putting another cable over the top, and this is the crucial point finding new anchorage points which are further out. And in suggesting that we already know that the bridge can be repaired, uh, Patrick Harvey perhaps knows how these anchorage points will be located and whether they are fit for purpose. I can assure you I don't know the answer to that particular question. Uh, and at this stage, I don't think anyone else does. And it's, it's not at all clear that that particular issue in relation to putting that additional cable over the top to allow you to repair uh, the existing bridge is well understood. I, I don't want to pretend it cannot be solved. I'm only saying it can't be solved. Mark, hello. Margo MacDonald. I, I, I thank the Minister for giving way because this might determine my vote this evening. Um, inside what sort of time frame could you find out where these fixings would go? Stuart Stevens. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I can give uh, a substantive answer to that. Uh, what, what I can say is that uh, the, the next step is to understand the nature of the existing uh, anchorages because we know about the deterioration in the cable. We know rather less about the condition of the existing anchorages. But that research is likely to give some further insight into the answer uh, to that uh, particular uh, question. Although it may not deliver the certainty that the member is seeking to have me give her, and I wouldn't want to mislead uh, Parliament. Uh, Charlie went on and said we must grasp the nettle and endorse this bill, and I think that is broadly, if not totally, uh, the consensus that we've uh, seen from uh, today's uh, debate. Uh, Alec Johnson uh, uh, took uh, very bravely, as others of us did, uh, interventions from George Fouts. I suspect when we add up the minutes that he spoke in this debate, it may exceed many uh, who had uh, a speaking slot in the, this, this particular debate. And the tricky question of the communities of Newton, South Queen's Reading, and Kirk Liston, identified by many, particularly by uh, Margaret Smith, um, I don't want to downplay the concerns of people in these communities. They are a quite legitimate concerns that require uh, to be addressed. I would say that uh, we will continue to engage with the community of Newton. We've made some initial proposals. Indeed, we're we're looking to have continuous engagement with each of the community councils who have an interest uh, in this bridge uh, and, and the effects of it. The bottom line is we do want to take actions that will seek to make travel via Newton less attractive to people. In other words, that they only do it once. Uh, they discover that while the sat-nav may say uh, that that's a good way to go, when they experience it, they say it's not. Um, we, we have uh, in the past, uh, for a variety of reasons, sought to make contact with the providers of maps to satellite navigations, um, without so far very much success, I have to say. Uh, but it's something which, for a much wider agenda, uh, to stop uh, HGVs in particular going down many inappropriate routes in Scotland will continue to engage with. South Queensferry, of course, will get the benefit that the existing bridge traffic that goes right through the middle of South Queensferry it will no longer do that. So there is a balance of uh, advantage and disadvantage. Alice McInnes uh, talked about wanting a full uh, multimodal bridge. Well, having a multimodal bridge essentially was uh, what was responsible for the substantial difference between the price we now have and the price uh, that, we, the, the, that we first heard, which is 3.4 to some 4.3 billion pounds. Um, and when I challenged it originally, the key thing that we established was that the reason a multimodal bridge was being planned was because light rail could not go over the existing bridge. And I challenged that 
and further work was done and it was established that it would be possible to put light rail, rail on the existing bridge. And I think that fundamentally changed uh, the cost and the design in a way which certainly protected the public purse but also uh, gives us opportunities that we might not uh, otherwise uh, have. Um, the new bridge of course will have the same capacity as the existing bridge. Integrating bus and rail across East Scotland, yes that is important. Um, it was suggested there was quite a lot of capacity available on the rail bridge. Actually that is not so, partly because there is a very long block on the bridge uh, which we hope to relieve uh, by putting an extra signal in the middle of the bridge to break it into two blocks which will increase capacity. In fact, it was necessary for us to get the traffic onto the Stirling Alawick and Carden line before we could even find the capacity to increase rail uh, passenger services across to Fife. So it isn't quite as simple uh, as might have uh, been uh, suggested. Optimism bias. Um, that Dave uh, Stewart and that ever reliable source Wikipedia. I prefer uh, Professor Fred P. Brooks, The Mythical Man Munch, Month, which is uh, my uh, favorite project management book. He has a, every chapter starts with a quotation. One of them starts with, Ein ship op et strand is uh, um, ein beacon var am sea, which is Dutch, which says when you get a sh beached ship, that's a warning to the sailor. Well, we're looking at previous projects that have not been successful. We're taking the appropriate warnings. Optimism bias, a treasury rule, is actually a useful way of getting a grip of uh, many uh, things that we need uh, to do. Um, Ted Brocklebank uh, averred that he was still a tunnel fan. It is worth just reminding ourselves that a tunnel would not be able to take whiskey lorries or fuel lorries because of the uh, risks associated with that. Um, that was by no means the reason why the choice was made, but it is for Fife, uh, with its interest in whisky, perhaps something that should not be entirely uh, disregarded. Helen Eady um, asked me about 10T. Uh, let me assure Helen Eady we did make two applications. It may be that the answer she got was of the, because of the question she asked. These applications do go in not in the name of the Scottish Government, but in the name of the DFT. So, depending on the question that was asked, it's not necessarily inconsistent. We are preparing a third application, uh, but it is worth reminding members that the total uh, allocation across Europe was only 80 million euros. So it's not decisive in funding terms, alas and alack. Margaret Smith talked about 100 pounds per vehicle uh, per bus as it crosses uh, the old bridge. Uh, that is a fully allocated cost. If you send no brushes across, you've, you save very little of that £100 per bus. There is a difference between the cost when you allocate it and what you save when you don't do the activity. That's quite fundamental, and I really don't have time, I'm sorry. <laughs> do beg your pardon. I'll, I'll talk to the member afterwards if she wishes uh, to hear more on the subject. Um, Patrick Harvey said nothing else would be done during the building of this bridge because of the finance. Absolutely not. There are major rail projects, investments in public transport that will continue. The Edinburgh Glasgow Improvements Programme being an absolutely important one, £1 billion in the period up to uh, 2015. So yes, we'll be doing many, many other things indeed. Uh, we will uh, issue the next version of the construction, uh, Code of Construction Practice Programme by the 31st of May, so members will be able to see us putting flesh uh, on the commitments uh, that we have uh, made there. Uh, consultation is something I believe every time we do consultation in transport and any part of our activities, it's possible to look at that and say, can we improve it, and conclude the answer is yes. We will certainly do that. We actually have done a great deal of consultation and direct interaction proactively uh, going out and engaging uh, with people. And I believe uh, that we've probably done more than we have ever done before. But I recognize this is a very big project affecting a large number of people, and we'll certainly look at the lessons. I believe the case for the bill has been very well made. The replacement crossing is an essential element of our national infrastructure. It has been a very good and informative debate. We'll continue engagement with the committee and with the Parliament. I take very great pleasure in endorsing my previous moving of the motion in favour of this principles of this bill.